Hello, welcome back. This is the week of September 25th to October 1st, and you're in for some really exciting news this week because a lot happened. So without further ado, let's just jump into the news of the week. The first big news is that React 15.6.2 was released with the MIT license. No, that's not actually the big news. The big news, the really big news, is that React 16 was actually finally released as a final. Woo! sound the alarms. That's really, really exciting because that is just a huge release. It is a complete rewrite of the entire internal system of React 16 called Fiber, as you might have heard about it before. But just to give a quick recap of what React 16 has, it has fragments, meaning that you can return an array from components. It has error boundaries, which lets you easily recover from errors. It has portals you can render outside of your current actual DOM tree. It has support for custom DOM attributes. It has improved server-side rendering. And to top it all off, it's smaller. That's incredible. This is a very exciting release. Uh, the reaction from everybody in the community has been, I think, very positive as well, that coupled with the MIT uh, announcement as well. So uh, I'm looking forward to trying out React to my own applications, and you definitely think you should do as well because it's definitely setting the stage for uh, many future React releases as well. So that's, that's good. I'm reacting really well as well. <laughs> that joke is too easy. <laughs> And alongside React 16, Enzyme 3.0 was released as well, which means that now you can actually test your React 16 applications with Enzyme. The big deal with the new Enzyme 3.0 release is that it now works with an adapter system, meaning that you actually provide Enzyme an adapter on how it should interface with the actual React-like rendering system that you might be using, which means that if you're using Preact, you can actually start using Enzyme with Preact today. It's very good that Enzyme 3.0 is released because if you already have a React application written before React 16, and you want to upgrade to React 16, Enzyme was going to be a blocker for you. So now that you actually can upgrade to Enzyme 3 to use that with React 16, that means now you can actually test your React 16 applications with Enzyme 3.0. However, in my case, with my applications, I'm actually using Chai Enzyme, which means that it hasn't been updated yet to make use of uh, Enzyme 3, so I'm still down here using React 15, which is a very sad state and one that I actually uh, just cry about every night because I want the newest and greatest, and until the libraries and the ecosystem can catch up, I'm just going to be left behind a little bit. But, you know, don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Don't worry. It's okay. In the land of no, there is a project called Neon, which I had not heard about until this past week when a blog post came out asking for help from the community. Neon is a pretty cool library uh, for, uh, in its own words, for conveniently implementing native Node.js modules with Rust instead of C or C++. Currently, if you wanted to make a native Node module, you would only be able to use uh, C or C++. Anything else, you have to jump through many hoops to make it actually integrate with Node easily. And Neon is trying to bring that same ease to the Rust ecosystem. So you might have some Rust code over here, some Node.js code over here, and thanks to Neon in the middle, you can now have those two talking to each other in a nice, easy way. They're asking for help. They are trying to get the community off the ground. So if you do have help there, definitely reach out to them. They would be most appreciative for that. I'm very interested in Rust. So to see this get off the ground as well, it's going to be awesome to see native node modules written with Rust soon, hopefully. And last but not least, the TC39 committee. That is the committee that decides how the ECMAScript language, meaning JavaScript, is evolving over the years. They had a September meeting where they talked about proposals and advanced things through their stage process of having it actually adopted as a real feature of ECMAScript. Uh, two notes from this TC39 meeting of interest for me particularly, one is that private methods and accessors advance from stage two to stage three. And that is just blowing my mind that this proposal actually adds a new glyph that lets you actually write uh, properties and methods in your JavaScript classes that are private to that class enforced at the language level. That is wild. If you had ever told me five, a year ago that JavaScript would actually have private methods or accessors, I'd laugh you out of the room. And here we are, stage three, one step behind having it being implemented natively in browsers. That's incredible. And another proposal that I find interesting that was just introduced to the TC39 committee is the nullary coalescing. Nullary coalescing. No, I don't know how to say that. But it was just introduced to the TC39 committee. And effectively what this is, is it that in syntax of JavaScript so that, you know, 
right now, if you wanted to have a default value, say A uh, or value, like A pipe pipe value, now you can actually do A question mark question mark uh, value. So this is a shorthand for A question mark uh, A colon value. It's a nice little shorthand syntax. I'm interested in it because I have been bit many times by the condition where you have A or B and A evaluates to falsy, but I actually want that falsy value to be assigned. So having this null array coalescing thing that I can't say the words, uh, actually in the language will hopefully prevent those bugs from happening more often. Other things that happen in the TC39 committee, if you are interested, I have it linked down below to read more in depth about it. It's always exciting to see what is being introduced to the, uh, to the language of JavaScript. Uh, it, it's moving faster now than ever, which I find exciting. Uh, but be curious to see what happens in October or whenever the next meet, which I don't know what that is, but we'll find out soon. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Okay, that was the week of news. That was a lot of stuff there. We had React, we had Enzyme, we have Portal Fetch, we have Neon, we have TC39. Oh my God. And all the fall TV show seasons are starting as well. Who has time to do anything? I don't but I still managed to make these videos. Hopefully you're finding them entertaining, and if you are, please do subscribe down below and tell your friends, family, and loved ones, including pets, because I've been told that I have a very soothing voice with animals, dogs in particular, they like my howl. But please do enjoy and have a good rest of the week.